Let's talk about relationships, connecting your resources across the entire OSF. Okay, taking a step back. If you've gone through the process so far, you've created a project, you've created your OSF profile, uh, you have created a registration, you've created a preprint. You have these tools. Uh, and the metaphor I'd used at the beginning was you created chapters in a book. Now it's time to put the binding together. How are they gonna fit together? Switching between metaphors, uh, it's not only a book that you've created, you want researchers to come and read that book. Uh, and thinking about all of the researchers in the world, you want to be collecting and casting a net in a very specific section so that you catch the researchers who are going to actually want to use your work, right? So the first thing I want you to think about is this idea of persistent identifiers. Uh, you're going to be connecting those chapters of your book, that preprint, the registrations, the projects. You're going to be connecting all that information together uh, with what are called persistent identifiers. Now, a persistent identifier is essentially a link. Uh, it is an externally maintained link. Um, so like an ORCID ID, a DOI. Uh, but these links are externally maintained so that they never break. Um, I'd be curious to see, and you can feel free to put this in the chat if you've ever had this happen to you. Have you ever been on, you know, reading a research paper, a publication, and it says, hey, here's a link to my data and all the things that are associated with it, or uh, a link to a project or something that's associated with this, you know, publication. You're really interested in that. You click on it, and it ends up being a broken link. That broken link is kind of like a hole in this net of trying to catch these researchers coming into your work, right? Uh, so instead of all of these things on our OSF profiles being connected together, I now have a hole where that preprint might be. Uh, that means that there's a gap of somebody who might come to my preprint and they might not be able to find everything else. That's really unfortunate. Um, so one of the ways we get around that is again called persistent identifiers. Uh, those are externally maintained links. Uh, we use data site and Crossref uh, to help maintain uh, each one of those links. And I'll show you what that looks like on each one of these projects. Uh, but say, uh, if you're trying to connect your preprint, your registration, your profile, all those things would be maintained through persistent identifiers. So let's take a quick look at how can I connect all these different parts of my projects and registrations and components together. Uh, so the first one I want to look at is, say, uh, this project that we created. Um, so I'm going to go back to our test site. I'm going to go to my projects. I'm going to look at the first project that I created, which was the one that we just did 12 minutes ago. There's a couple of different things. So the first thing is that now that I'm on my project, I don't see a DOI. Do you? That's because DOIs are really meant for things that are public. So anything that you find on the OSF, whether it's a registration or you know, a project or a preprint, they really have to be public in order to get that DOI, that digital object identifier, which is our links to different things. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is, in this case, I'm going to make this project public. Once I click and make that public, you'll see over in this uh, left-hand column a section called Create a DOI. This allows me to create a DOI, which, as you guys will see, is a digital object identifier. This is a link that I'm able to use and connect in different ways. Okay, another question. I want to connect this project to a registration. I've created and filled out this form, and there's a couple of different uh, ways of doing that. Uh, one other thing that you might want to do is I would look up we have a way of looking at templates of this project. If you want to fill out that information, that's another one a link that we can send in the chat here. But uh, say I want to connect my project to a registration. Up here in the top bar, I'm going to click Registrations. And I want to create a registration based on that project. I filled this out, and I filled out all the information my uh, registration in that project. I could create a registration based on that project. All I would do is create a new registration after clicking that top bar. And this allows me to create, again, that same registration workflow. But this one is based on my project. So say I wanted to go through that process, and I'm going to go through a standard pre-registration template. Uh, let's go over here. 
I'm going to create a draft. This will pull in information from my project. Now, obviously, I didn't fill that out very much, but as you can see, the title of it is the same as what my project was, test. It'll have the same contributors, but make sure that you do test and check what permission levels you want to have on your registration versus project, because those can be different. But that's a great way of connecting a project from registration. Now, let's also talk about registrations. How can you connect a registration to both your projects and your preprints? Well, first, let's take that DOI that we had here uh, and I'm going to go back. Oops. Right here. Uh, we're going to go back to the overview of this project. I'm going to take that DOI. And I'm going to go to say this registration that is mine. This is one that we had kind of worked through and we've shown. Now, if say I wanted to connect a registration, now this is again a public registration. Down here, you'll see where that registration DOI is located. Again, only public registrations have that DOI, uh, but sometimes we'll get questions in say support that'll ask us, hey, where's my registration number, my registration ID? You're looking for that registration DOI that's located right here. A couple of different things that you can do. Once you have, uh, say, filled out this test information, you've created components, you've created all these different things, uh, your data analyses, all these you know, things that are associated with the project. You can take these different DOIs and each component can have its own DOI. And you can go up here to what are called open resources practice badges. Along this left-hand column, you'll see resources. I'm going to click this. And all this is, is I'm able to choose what resource type I'm going to be adding and connecting to my registration. The idea is that now that you've created you know, a registration, which is a plan, I can now connect all the things that are associated that came after that plan, whether that's the data analysis or analytic code, the materials, the papers. Uh, all those things can be supplemental to my work. Now, in this case, I will say that that project is data. I want to add that DOI from our OSF project, and I can add a description if I want. I can connect it. So now anyone who finds my registration will then see that there is data associated with that registration. Additionally, if I'm on a preprint and I have you know, went through the whole preprint process and I have a DOI that's associated with it. I can take that DOI, copy it and bring it back to that registration and add it as another papers that are associated with that. Uh, additionally, you can do this with your peer reviewed publicated version of your, uh, your, your publication. Uh, you could take that DOI that they give you and add it back to your registration. All that you're trying to do is make sure that you are creating as many connections as possible. Uh, the last one I want to point out is if you're on a preprint, you're able to actually make some of those connections as well. Uh, if you want to, and we kind of glossed over this, uh, edit your preprint, go all the way down to uh, next, 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 next supplements, I can connect an existing uh, OSF project, or I can also connect a uh, new OSF project, or I can create a new OSF project as well. Again, you're creating those linkages that can go together. Now, going back to our presentation here, we've talked about where those locations are for each one of those things. Uh, you talked about how you can associate your projects with your registrations, your preprints, and kind of make sure that you're connecting all those things together. Let's take it another step back. Uh, because we have partnerships with DataSite and with ORCID, uh, you are actually able to connect all of your work on the OSF with your ORCID profile, which is a persistent identifier for you as a researcher. Uh, how that looks is that, say, all of your work on the OSF, you have a bunch of different projects that you have on the OSF. You can connect all of those automatically with your uh, ORCID profile. Uh, the way that you do this is a little bit more complicated. So the first thing you're going to do is actually go to ORCID. Uh, for anyone who's looking that up, that's ORCID.org. Uh, uh, ORCID uh, first thing you're going to do is either sign in or register. Uh, and then I'm going to actually sign in to ORCID. And if you are wondering 
man, he's going really quick through this. Uh, what you can do is you can look at this help guide that we have. Uh, one second. As a way of connecting your work. Uh, this will walk you through this exact same process. Uh, but what you would do is once you've logged into ORCID, I would go down to the bottom where it says works. I'm going to click this add button and I'm going to click search and link. All this is going to do is show us all the ways that I can connect my ORCID profile with something. In this case, you're going to connect it with data site. That should be like the fifth one down. I'm going to click data site. It's going to go through an authorization method and I'm going to authorize this access. Again, the reason why I'm doing this is that we have a partnership with DataSite. And if you add any DOI or create a project or preprint or a registration, you're actually creating that connection with DataSite. And by connecting this you know, connection with ORCID with DataSite, you can actually connect your OSF profiles. Anything you create on the OSF can go directly to your ORCID profile, which are used for a lot of different uh, grant applications, things like that. So I'm gonna click update here click save. Auto save is now enabled. So now if I go to my OSF project, uh, this is again on our test site, uh, but all of the last step that I would need to do is go to my profile page, which is right here, top left or right hand corner, click my profile. I'm going to leave. The last thing I'm going to need to do is make sure that my profile on the OSF is connected with that ORCID account. I'm going to click edit your profile. I'm going to go to social and I'm going to add my ORCID number. Uh, for those who aren't sure what your ORCID number is, once you have created and registered on ORCID ID, take that information and I'm going to set this up here. And I'm going to click save. By doing this, I have connected my profile with that ORCID account. And now anything I create on the OSF will now automatically sync with my ORCID profile, which is very valuable, uh, especially for saving time. So now that we've cast our net a little bit wider, connected all of our projects with our ORCID profile, you can see how our net's getting a little bit wider and wider and wider, where a researcher who, say, finds a preprint on this project could then find our profile, our projects, but then also find our profile ID through ORCID, and then connect to all the other things that we are doing. Lastly, I want to talk about metadata. We talked a little bit about this when we were talking about search, but there's another perspective when you're looking through things on the OSF. You want to make sure that researchers are able to find your work on the OSF. So if you're looking at whether it's projects, the files on your projects, uh, the components, uh, your registrations, your registration files, your preprints, all of them can have what are called metadata. Metadata are just ways of finding your work. It's data about your data. Um, the idea being that if, say, someone is on just the regular OSF, and I go to search, any of the information that I find on here, all this layered information, the title, the authors, where is it from, the date created, date modified, all those badges, those things that we were talking about, they're all considered metadata because at this very high level for an outside researcher, I'm selecting what paper or file or thing that I actually want to pay attention to. The more information that you provide, the stronger that net is, the better chance of people finding and clicking on your work. So here you can see a registration. I could see that this particular registration does not have any data associated with it, doesn't have any code, any materials, any paper, any supplements. But if, say, it did, it would make it much more appealing for me to actually click on this particular one. So what does that look like on each one of these sections? So say I go to uh, my registrations. This is a registration that I created on the OSF. I can edit the metadata by going over here on this left-hand column, clicking metadata. I can go through and make some changes. So that description, contributors, resource type, uh, funder languages. Remember, these are all the filters that people are trying to search for your work. Right now, I don't have anything associated with this one. So if someone were to say, even if this is a, you know, a book, a chapter, a collection, they're not going to be able to find it unless I designate what it is, right? Uh, 
choosing what language it is. All these things are very important for others to find your work. So I would take a second after you filled out all this information, make sure that you fill out the metadata. It's very important for people to find your work on the OSF. Same thing goes for when you're on a project. Uh, there's a metadata tab right up here at the top. If I click on that, I now have a very similar looking board. I have a description, contributors, what resources is it? Is it a, a you know, book, chapter, anything of that information? It helps people find your work. Make sure that you're filling that out. Additionally, any files that are associated with your work, and this particular one doesn't have a file, um, so I will actually just upload a file quickly. All I'm doing here is uploading a file from my computer. It's a test file that I use. Uh, but I can actually edit the metadata on this particular file as well. All I would do is right along this corner, you'll see metadata, click edit. This allows me to create fields for people to find uh, your work. Uh, lastly, on your preprint, uh, what you can do is go to uh, my projects. In this case, go to preprints, flying around a little bit. Uh, I'm going to find my preprint a little bit slower today. Click on the test. Now, for your metadata that is found here, you can either uh, look at it along the side here, or you can look at the top section. It would be the third one down, edit metadata. This is the meta metadata field. But all these things along this field are, again, ways of researchers finding your specific work. Again, that goal is to create as wide of a net as possible, but also make it as easy as possible for researchers to actually make sure that they end up in the right place. Thank you.